This is part 5 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss content negotiation in ASP.NET Web API. So what is content negotiation? One of the standards of the RESTful service is that the client should be able to decide the format of the response they want from the server. For example, does the client want the response in XML, JSON, etc. When a client sends a request to the server, the request also includes something called accept header. Using this accept header, the client can specify the format for the response they want from the server. For example, if the accept header is set to application for slash XML, the server sends the response in XML format. If it is set to application for slash JSON, then the response format is going to be in JSON. Let's look at this quickly in action. Let's flip to Fiddler. Now look at the Composer tab right here. We are issuing a request to this URI for slash API for slash employees. And look at the accept header value, application for slash XML. So in this case, the client wants the response from the server in XML format. So let's execute this and let's inspect the response that we get. Notice here we get the response in XML format as you can see. Now, in addition to the server sending the response in XML format, it also sends the content type header of the response to appropriate value. Since the response is in XML format, content type of the response header is set to application for slash XML. Now, if you want the response from the server to be in JSON, then instead of using application for slash XML, we use application for slash JSON. Let's execute this. And here is the response from the server. Let's double click on that. Notice now we get JSON response. And if you look at the content type header within the response, notice it is set to application for slash JSON as expected. So depending on the accept header value in the request, the server sends the response. This is called content negotiation. Now, let's understand what does the Web API do when we request for data in a specific format. The Web API controller generates the data that we want to send to the client. In our example, the employees controller is generating the list of employees that we want to return to the client. Once the list of employees is generated, the job of the controller is over. It's going to hand that list to the Web API pipeline, which then looks at the accept header. And depending on the format that the client has requested, Web API will choose the appropriate formatter for formatting the data. For example, if the client has requested for XML data, Web API uses XML formatter. If the client has requested for JSON data, Web API uses JSON formatter. These formatters are nothing but classes, and they are called media type formatters. We know that ASP.NET Web API is greatly extensible. This means we can also plug in our own formatters for custom formatting the data. We can also specify multiple values for the accept header. Notice here we have set accept header to XML and JSON. So now in this scenario, the server is going to look at the list of all formatters that are available, and then it is going to pick the first formatter, which happens to be the JSON formatter. And in this case, it's going to format the data in JSON. Let's quickly look at this in action. So let's set the accept header to both application JSON and application XML, and let's execute our request. Let's double click on the response that we get. Notice the response is in JSON. You can also specify quality factor in the accept header. Notice we have set the XML quality factor to 0.8 and JSON quality factor to 0.5. So in this case, XML has got higher quality factor than JSON. So the server is going to use XML formatter to format the data in XML and return it to the client. Let's quickly look at this in action. So let's set JSON quality factor to 0.4 and XML quality factor to 0.9. Since XML has got higher quality factor than JSON, we should get the response in XML. Now, if we don't set the accept header at all, then by default, Web API returns data in JSON format. Let's quickly look at this as well in action. So let's remove the accept header altogether. 
and when we execute this request notice we get the response in the default JSON format. One important thing to keep in mind is that these media type formatters are used by the server for both request and response messages. When the client sends a request to the server, we set the content type header to the appropriate value to let the server know the format of the data that we are sending. For example, if the client is sending JSON data, the content type header is set to application for slash JSON. So in this case, the server knows it is dealing with JSON data, so it uses JSON formatter to convert JSON data to .NET type. Similarly, when a response is being sent from the server to the client, depending on the accept header value, the appropriate formatter is used to convert .NET type to JSON or XML, etc. We can very easily change the settings of these media type formatters to meet our application requirements. Let's look at an example of that now. Let's flip to Fiddler. First, let's request for JSON data. If you look at the raw JSON data that we have here, notice this JSON data is not properly indented. And if you look at the property names, they're using Pascal case. Now what we want to do is indent this data properly and use camel case instead of pascal case for the property names. So first name should really be lowercase letter f and uppercase letter n. Let's see how easy it is to achieve both of these things simply by changing the serialization settings of the JSON serializer. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Within our web API config.cs file, we have our register method, which is receiving HTTP configuration object as a parameter. So we're going to use that config object, config.formatters, and we want JSON formatter, and we want to set serializer settings, and we want to set the formatting of that to newtonsoft.json.formatting. Indented. So this is going to properly indent the JSON data. And we also want to use um, camel case instead of Pascal case for the property names. And to do that, again, we are going to use the same thing config.formatters.json formatter dot uh, serializer settings dot contract resolver equals new camel case property names contract resolver. So with just these two lines of code, let's build our solution. Build succeeded. Now let's go ahead and request JSON data again. So let's go to the Composer tab, execute it, and now if we look at the raw data, notice the raw data is properly indented and the property names are now using camel case instead of pascal case. Here's the code that we just looked at. Thank you for listening and have a great day.